going to double check something here. We are live. We have people logging in now. But I just want to double check a screen share setting. Father, you are on uh, mute, just so you know. Okay. Give me the thumbs up, Mike, when we're ready. Yeah, at 6 o'clock, we have people logging in now, um, joining us. We can start any time. Um, it's right at 6 o'clock, so it's up to you. All right, why don't we give everyone just one more minute. This is Rich Romandi coming to you from Bishop Kelly High School, along with Mike Caldwell and Father Greg Vance. Uh, we'll start in just one minute. Well, good evening, everyone. This is Rich Romandi, the president of Bishop Kelly High School. And I think our theme tonight of growing forward together is appropriate. I wanna thank you for joining us. Uh, as with most things this year, uh, this is our first ever virtual back to school night. I wanna go over the agenda briefly and then we'll turn it over to Father Vance and ask him to lead us as we do in all major events for Bishop Kelly, lead us in prayer this evening. So review briefly the agenda. Um, I'll do a, Mike, if you could forward this slide. Mike, could you forward a slide? Did you hear me? Um, it's, it's on the agenda, Rich. Not, not showing on my screen, so. Yep, go ahead. Um, so on our agenda this evening, um, we'll spend the first bit of our time after our prayer and introductions um, with reviewing uh, where we are today as the start of the year. We'll start with our first two week survey results. Uh, we'll go then what our go forward plan together is for instructional and operational. Um, but, you know, it's in addition to what we're experiencing now, we also have to be thinking about beyond these first couple months and beyond this school year. So we want to spend some time talking about enrollment, where we've been, where we project, and about the financial health of our school. It's very important at this time. We also want to talk about what our strategy for the future is, so we'll review our strategic plan and where we're at as we wrap up and celebrate our Bishop Kelly 2020 campaign. And then we'll wrap up with a discussion of the school theme. We'll turn over then to our B Bishop Kelly Foundation and our winner's choice. And we'll wrap up the whole evening with Mike talking about your instructions, if you will, and a few tips on what to do for this virtual back to school night. So you can get a feel for your sons or daughters, teachers, syllabi, et cetera. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Father Vance and ask him to open up with prayer tonight. Thank you, Rich, and good evening, everybody. I remember very fondly last year's back to school night and how much fun it is to meet uh, the parents of my own students and the parents of so many students at the school. And so I really regret that we're not able to be together in the same way. And uh, I know there are just so many concerns and cares in our hearts. Um, during Mass the last few days, we've been hearing from the Gospel of Luke as Jesus engages in his healing ministry. And he heals those who are sick in mind and body and in spirit. And so I think it's appropriate as we begin this virtual back to school night that we direct our prayer to Jesus, our divine healer. So let's begin as we begin all things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus and all serious illness. 
For those who died from it, have mercy. For those who are ill now, bring healing. For those searching so hard for a remedy, enlighten them. Medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant them peace. May your precious blood always be our defense and our salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sinfulness even more than any illness. And so we abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. And we pray especially for the young women and men who grace our halls, who grow together as Bishop Kelly has son in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Rich. I want to take a quick moment. Normally, we would be doing this uh, with all of us in the Carly Center as we kick off our back to school night and introduce our administrative team and our counseling and support team, people that are important. If you're new to the school, get to know, and many of you who are been at our school for a while have a good Feel, but it's nice to know we do have a couple new additions to our team. We'll hear from Mike Caldwell in just a little bit. And you know, our two assistant principals were exceptional administrative team, Cheryl Hutchinson and Stephanie Herrera, Tom Shannon, our activities director, Tommy Steiner, director of development. We just met Father Vance again, our campus minister, Larissa Horn, and Kelly Shockey. Many of you new families have met over the course of this time, our director of the missions. And our counseling and support team, we're excited to welcome back Chris Hainer, Sam Christensen, and Chrissy Kane. And you can see the alphabet that they cover. And if you haven't had a chance to meet them yet, I'm, I'm, they're very responsive and want to do the best for you and your students. Julie Clover is a new addition, comes to us from Eastside, excuse me, Kennedy Catholic in Seattle, had been uh, in a similar role there. Uh, she replaces Mary Crum, who retired. Jen Curdy, an outstanding student support director, and then Joan Colloran, who manages our service learning program. So we're very uh, happy and excited to both bring some new folks in and welcome back the vast majority of the team we have as we move into this uncertain times that we're facing um, as we begin the 2021 school year. As speaking of the 2021 school year, the next slide talks about our goals for this school year. And this is something that's been guiding all of our decisions over the past um, ooh, six months, I guess, five months now as we're entering September, as we started to think about what it would be like after we moved out of our virtual instruction in the fourth quarter of last year. The first goal is one that we'll speak to tonight, and that is to make the learning experience exceptional for all Bishop Kelly students and faculty and staff. The second is make sure we have a plan because things will change and we need to adapt. And as we learn and learn quickly and adapt, that plan that provides flexibility, adaptability, and options for students, faculty, and staff in our school. Third object goal, and not necessarily in this order, but we absolutely need to make sure we keep our students, faculty, staff, and community safe and healthy. And finally, Thanks to your efforts, this is really starting to come true. Also engage our parents and community as partners to the overall learning experience of our students. So I'd like to take a moment then and talk about the survey results from the first couple of weeks of the school year. Um, we uh, appreciate the 142 of you who responded over the weekend and uh, the last day or two. Um, a good representation of families and classes. Uh, many of you have multiple, of 142 minutes probably represents close to 200 or more of our students. Three quick key questions we asked. One, how are we doing so far in your child's overall educational experience? How would you rate us on a scale of one, four to 10, exceptional? You gave us a 7.8, which given the challenges we've had, we are very pleased, but we also know we have room to improve and we'll talk about that. Second question we asked was, how would you rate the timeliness and quality of communications from BK? Thank you for that. That's something that's been a um, big priority for Mike and myself and Katie Hayes, our Director of Communications, 
Um, and you gave us high marks on that. And we'll talk about areas we can improve in that also. And finally, something we asked of you back in June and then again in August at our town hall on August 6th, your commitment to action to reduce the spread of COVID-19 at home and on weekends by following the three W's and minimize the size of informal gatherings. And how are you doing? And I'm very pleased and delighted that you have only that you have uh, 8.7 out of 10 are filling that. Huge thank you. We can't do it with just your kids here at school and you've done a great job. And as you know, our goal is to stay in school, get everyone back to school and stay in school throughout this school year and not have to take step backwards. And it only happens if we work together in partnership. So thank you for that. Next slide shows uh, two questions we asked you to specifically talk, give us your feedback on. And here's uh, the top, if you will, seven items when we asked you, what are your highest priority questions or concerns? And you see in the parentheses at the end, what, how, what number of you uh, mentioned this one? Uh, 23 of you were concerned about opening school to all students. Um, while um, next week or while we're in category three. The second area, the second one most uh, almost an equal number was many of you want kids back in school full time. Could be for reasons that you believe that the risk is low or that your kids or other kids struggle online, even those two days a week. Third most cited was safety of students and staff and their families. The fourth was the athletic and safety and risk of exposure in sports social distancing in halls and in, at lunch, I think probably reflecting some of what you were hearing from your students. Um, four of you said, I, we would like to know what it's gonna take to go full time. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And what would happen when, what would we use to make the decision to go full time online? And um, I think that'll be one where we know, um, by the way, just as a note, we won't talk about this tonight, but we still only have two positive cases, and both of those are coming off their quarantine, and the 36 students that were in quarantine will be off quarantine as of today. So that's what we know, and we still have no faculty or staff in that situation. And the last one was mixed class instructions and teacher preparation. Many other comments and questions, and you know, one-offs or two or three, and we will continue to address those in the coming days and weeks. The second question we asked that we wanted to highlight and share with you, again, in this uh, spirit of communication, transparency, um, and timeliness is what comments, ideas, or suggestions do you have? The most of you, a good number of you were impressed and thanked us for the preparation, execution, flexibility, and all we have done for your children and family. And that was uh, about to the whole school, not just um, singled out people. Thank you for that. Um, again, a number of you were concerned about having all students on campus. Uh, several commented you'd like to keep the hybrid longer and worried about having an outbreak from either if we come back too early or not ready for it, or we have sports that, uh, that could cause some contagion. So last uh, two items were appreciate the online option. Several would like us to keep it and, and move forward. Um, with that, and um, I'm almost equal in number one, I made the suggestion, want all kids back in school all the time as soon as possible. So that's what we heard from the survey. Thank you again for the people who filled it out. Uh, we look forward to getting your feedback as we move forward. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and he's going to talk about how we are looking at the instructional plan so far and what's our go-forward plan. So, Mike? Thanks, Rich. Um, good evening, everyone. It's Mike Caldwell, principal at Bishop Kelly. Um, this this whole uh, state of the school is not all about our um, our you know about COVID and instructional plan. We want to we want to touch on that, but we're going to have some time also to talk about the next three years and our strategic plan and some other things as well. So I'm going to keep this moderately short um, and, and break it down into just kind of three parts. One, I just wanted to touch on some of the bright spots that we've seen over the last two and a half weeks since we've, we've had students on campus. Um, touch on, based on our observations and also survey results and, and feedback that we receive, our top five focus areas or areas of, of, of improvement going forward. And then, um, and then also speak 
about our instructional plan moving forward starting starting next week that many of you received in our just-in-time email that we sent um, earlier this afternoon. So our top five bright spots um, thus far, um, number one, without a doubt, is, is seeing students back on campus. I know that was um, our, our huge goal of ours in, in throughout the summer. It's something that I know our parents wanted, our students wanted, our teachers wanted, and, and we as the leadership team have wanted. And so it's been just a blessing even though we haven't had 100% of our students back on campus, but to, just to see kids back in classrooms, um, interacting with each other, interacting with um, teachers, uh, walking through the halls, that's um, been a huge blessing and a, and a bright spot without a doubt. We've also seen um, in our in our day-to-day um, -day, a real effort and commitment on the three W's, on watching distances in classrooms um, and hallways, although we can always improve in that area. Um, washing hands and, and disinfecting desks and those types of things and wearing masks and I really appreciate all, all of our our efforts in that on that side with our students as well as our faculty and staff and making that a, a, a priority and and really uh, working together on, on that I've also seen a tremendous effort by our teachers um, you know a lot of respect for from our from our teacher side you know it'd be much easier if everyone was on campus it would also be easier in some respect um, to be all online. One or the other um, helps our teachers really focus and, and, and do their best planning and, and efforts connecting with kids. What we've, the situation we've been in, however, has been um, a situation where students are both in class and as well as online at the same time. And that, that is, a, um, is a significant challenge as a, as a teacher um, to manage not just the students, but the technology and, and all of those things that come with that. Um, but I've been really impressed and, and appreciative of our teachers' efforts to execute the plan despite those challenges and finding ways to make it work um, to the best of their abilities. And, 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 and I've really been, like I said, impressed with, with, with them working together and, and finding ways to make it work. And, and with that, we've had, um, we've had to come up with some solutions to some unique problems this year. One of which is as we have a handful, a small handful of our teachers that are at a higher risk category and are teaching from, from home while, our, while their students are in class, classes here at Bishop Kelly. And in order to make that work, we've, we've relied on a wonderful group of parent volunteers to, to sit in these classrooms and supervise and to help us continue the learning despite um, that unique situation. Additionally, um, we've had several of our faculty um, that have younger children, K through eight, that where their, where their children are not yet at school or, or not at school full time. And you know, if, if a year year ago you would have asked if we would have had kind of a stand-up daycare and, and some of these things, I would have thought you were crazy. But we have, you know, we have parent volunteers coming in to supervise and, and monitor our younger, um, our children of our, our faculty so that they can stay in the classrooms and teach. And so that's been a huge bright spot to see our parent volunteers um, really step up and support our, our instructional plan. We couldn't have done it without them. And then um, I would also say a bright spot has been, you know, and based on the survey, survey results as well as our response and, and communication when we have setbacks, when we had our recent um, positive cases within our, within our student community, the speed in which we responded to those and, and did our contact tracing, communicating with our parents. Um, although there's, there's definitely some areas of improvement there, um, I, I feel like that has also been a bright spot so far. So as we look ahead in, in areas of focus, one is we want all of our students on campus, but to do it in a safe way that as, as we've discussed in our goals. So making positive steps towards 100% of our students on campus. Number two is, is we really need our students um, to have the same level of commitment on maintaining safe protocols during lunch and after school. And we're seeing efforts in that in that area, but really minimizing um, co congregations outside in the, in the parking lot, and and making sure that we're wearing masks when we're we're not eating or drinking, and all those types of things. So really working on 
continuing to work on our students um, and, and their commitment to, to keep us going, keep us in school. In our just-in-time communication um, today, we, we mentioned some changes on communication protocols and access to information and utilizing our website um, at bk.org to, to um, and oftentimes re provide redundancies in the e email communication that we do with our just-in-time communication as well as our BK Alive communication. We realize that um, we all get inundated with emails and, and sometimes it's hard to to manage all of that information as, it, as it's coming at you. So we're going to, in addition to those things, um, provide access to our just-in-time information on our website, which you have access to today, as well as our BK Live. And then we're um, fine-tuning our COVID-19 uh, page on our website so that we have up-to-date up to information on any positive cases, quarantine, um, those types of things, as well as contact information. So if you have concerns or questions about possible exposure or um, just questions on process, um, having that information at your fingertips as well on our, on our, our website. So that's all available and, and was communicated on our just-in-time information today. And then as we move forward, um, we as fall sports um, ramp up and we get into our competitions, it's important that we focus on making sure that those activities are safe, that we provide events and competition opportunities for our athletes and also for our spectators to, to participate in that, but do it in a safe, um, controlled manner. And then finally, as we go through this and, and um, you know, we're, we're working through all the, the details of our instructional plan and, and keeping people safe, it's really important that we also um, find ways to maintain our community and strong culture despite these current challenges. We don't want this year to be a, a, a step backwards in, in how strong our community has been and our, our culture. And so it's important that we continue to focus efforts in, in developing community and, 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 and our culture. So going forward, this again was communicated in our Just in Time today. Starting next week after Labor Day, um, all of our students are welcome and encouraged to come to school every day. We will provide a hybrid um, option as um, for those that are unsure or still nervous about coming back to school. Um, but we won't be continuing next week our alternate um, blocks with freshmen, sophomores on one day and our juniors and seniors the next day. We're going to encourage and welcome all of our students to come to school starting on September 8th. But again, online learning will still be optional. Um, beyond that, um, if we're still in red, and we, we don't anticipate we will be, but if we are, are we'll, we'll continue just as we have, have plans for next week um, going forward. And if we get to a point of having uh, being in Category 2, our yellow stage, then we'll um, expect all students on campus and, and, and still provide a hybrid option by exception only. So for those students that are out being, you know, for testing or, or for quarantine or, or ill, um, we'll still um, help accommodate those students. But it, um, once we get to a yellow or category two, um, our, our plan remains as, as it has been to have all students and all faculty on campus. I'm going forward with activities. Um, I, maybe, maybe just a comment. And a lot of this is driven by our desire to provide an exceptional educational experience. As Mike said, one of the challenges has been asking teachers to live in two worlds. And I, we think it's not been great for the kids at times. And, and there's your surveys, comments made that. And, and talking to our teachers, it's been challenging for them. They're getting better at it. And, I think each day new tools, but it's not a long-term solution. I don't know if you want to add any more to that, Mike, but I think that's really what's driving it. And we do believe based on our experience, we can keep students and faculty and staff safe and healthy while they're here. So. Absolutely. Yep. I'm going forward with activities. We made a, a, a tough decision this week to uh, um, postpone competitions until 
until the, we have all students on campus. We felt like it was the, the right decision at the right time to, to postpone competitions this week. And um, our, our hope and our goal is, is that if, um, if all goes well by September or the week of September 8th, so the next week, um, we expect to be out of red. But even if we are in red, it'll, it'll still be a judgment call on having competitions. We feel um, optimistic that if we can get a week under our belt with all students on campus um, and, and prioritizing the academic side of our school, that we will uh, move forward with having um, safe competitions and um, with any home activities have a plan to um, manage the number of spectators and the distancing and the, the, the different safety protocols that we have in place and continue those at competitions and, and games. If we're in yellow um, then we will um, without a doubt have competitions and games. Um, we will have some safety protocols in place for home events as mentioned um, but even if we're in red next week, we are, um, like I said, we, we believe because we're our game scheduled for next week um, is home. We feel like we can, um, our, our football game, I should say, we feel like we can um, control, have some, some safety protocols in, in place and, and, and still have that um, and, and do it in a safe, in a safe manner. So this was a, a, a difficult decision that, that, that we made yesterday that, um, doesn't come without its criticism and, and disagreements for sure. But um, in the end, we prioritized our academics and in getting that next in, in place next week um, prior to having our students, um, our student athletes um, in competition. We did include some information on that in our in our just in time today. And um, obviously, if there's questions or comments on that, um, feel free to, to let us know. But uh, again, that is our decision going forward for this week. And we'll take each week on its own merit, and make the best decision for, for our students and our student athletes going forward. So if Rich, you want to add anything to that? Nope, I think you covered it well. Okay. Thanks. And then last, going forward, faith and our spiritual um, aspect of our school. Starting next week, we'll be again having morning mass three days per week in the Reg. Um, our athletic teams are going to be um, joining us for those, and um, our obviously our faculty staff and all of our students are welcome to join as well. We'll have that in the red so that there's adequate space to um, spread out as we have our morning mass. And then uh, we do have a plan for our all school mass. Um, we have a, a special schedule on the, on those days, um, and mass will be at 10:25 to 11:10. We'll be doing those through YouTube Live, similar to this. And then we'll, our students will be joining um, that, um, that ceremony from their classroom. So they'll be together in a classroom and we'll be doing kind of more of a hybrid model, at least through September, on September 17th, as well as very likely October 23rd. And that, that could change for October, but planning forward for September 17th, we'll have a, more of a hybrid type all school mass. Um, and then we'll make decisions as we get closer to the other dates on how we're, we're going to do that. So those are some of our plans going forward. I'm going to turn it back over to Rich, who's going to speak to our current enrollment and get into some of the other aspects of our school beyond our instructional plan. Thank you, Mike. This next slide uh, shares with you what our enrollment has been really over the last 20 years. And you can see over this period of time, in the beginning of the 21st century, that's hard to even say, um, we were in the six, in the mid 600s. We saw a dip with the recession in 2009 and 10 and 2010, 11, then started to climb. Um, I think started telling our story better, uh, doing a lot of things. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that helped us financially and to the point where this year, we are uh, experiencing record enrollment at 872 students. That is above our, our goal, our target that we set our budget on and I'm able to afford the number of teachers, new teachers that we have and give raises to our teachers and some of the PPE we had. So, and our goal has been to grow responsibly. If you look at the last 10 years, that's compound annual growth rate of three and a half percent. And that's manageable in terms of facilities growth and all the things that it takes to do that. Um, but it's really important 
in many ways uh, that we um, stay healthy financially, that we can have an enrollment that allows us to pay our teachers and provide the offer, the uh, course offerings and things that you and you, your families want, maintain a culture, our BK Way culture, and have the facilities to accommodate that. That's why you see us flattening out somewhere in that 925 to 950, could be 975, but 240 to 250 students per class with some attrition through the years gets us to that point. And we think that's a, really a pretty ideal size for a school of, of our caliber and the culture we want um, and the uh, sense of community that we want. So that's that's what our plan is as we go forward. Speaking of financial health, I wanna just briefly talk about with our budget, we project and have been on a regular basis. Last year was a little tough. We actually ran a small deficit, but small annual surplus. A big driver for us over the last 10 years is our growth in non-tuition revenue. Our goal is not to um, burden our parents with more than they can handle and to provide financial aid that we see, you see at the bottom of this slide. So an average of 2.6% per year in tuition and fees increases for the last 12 years. And that's been enabled uh, to keep that um, even with some inflation running faster than that and growth of some programs and compensation for our faculty, uh, the growth of non-tuition revenue. So our Bishop Kelly um, Foundation and their support, they're over 1.2 million this year that they've given us in both an unrestricted grant scholarships, a Kelly Pride Fund um, is, uh, is uh, approaching a half million dollars and then the support we receive from our parishes. And again, that's allowed us to pay our faculty and staff among the leaders in the Valley. When I first arrived, we were paying our faculty and staff probably 85% of the average. And today we're in the mid to high 90s of the leading school district, which is Boise for our faculty and staff. And that's really important for us to retain and um, incent and attract fantastic new faculty and staff. Um, we also are, are uh, I'll call it um, under, under, we have a foundation, um, not play on the BK Foundation, but for endowments that provide security if we ever should need it, support our operations and help us maintain our facilities. And the one, the largest one we'll talk a little bit about in a moment here is a BK Foundation at 13 million has grown significantly under the leadership of Rita Franklin and now Kim Malvick and an outstanding board of direct of trustees and leadership from them and the partnership with our BK 2020 campaign. We also have a couple of school funds that came from sale of property, um, estate gifts, um, and, um, and when we built the library. And then finally, we wanna make sure we always are a school that fulfills our mission. And that is to be available for all who wish to come and wish to succeed here. And not only for those who can afford it. So it's really important that we continue to fund and provide need-based tuition assistance. And over 25% of our, our, our students receive some form of need-based tuition assistance. So with that I message, we wanna grow responsibly. We wanna keep our culture strong. And we wanna make sure we're financially healthy and we wanna to continue to provide outstanding faculty and staff the compensation they deserve and your students and families the programs and offerings that, that, that are required in both spirit, mind, and all three, spirit, mind, and body. So let me shift then to talk about beyond this year where we're at, let's look to the future. And we spent, oh, quite a bit of time this uh, past fall and spring working on what's now our fourth strategic plan. Um, and so in this year, we, rather than do a five-year plan, we did a three-year plan to align with our accreditation cycle. So let me start with um, our mission. And this remains the same. It's something that drives us and drives our decisions, quite frankly, and on a day-to-day -day basis. And our mission, quite simply, is we educate and develop the whole student in the Catholic tradition, spirit, mind, and body. Our vision, where we want to be in the next uh, three to five and years and beyond, we reaffirm the vision we had coming into this planning period. We're a Catholic community achieving excellence in learning, service and life. And those are all carefully chosen words. A Catholic community, that part of being a Catholic community is welcoming to all faiths and all beliefs. Uh, excellence is our focus in the areas of learning, service and life. 
I'm often reminded of a football coach that uh, asked was asked one time, how's your team going to be this year, coach? And he said, I'll let you know in 20 years. And that's what a lot of what we think about. If we've done our job well here in learning service and life, our kids will be well prepared for a successful future. Which gets me to the next slide, which is the outcome of our vision. And we think of spirit, mind, and body. If we do our job again well, the outcomes we'll achieve is that our students will have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, ability to learn to form strong, respectful, and meaningful relationships with others based on Catholic values. In the mind portion, we hope to provide an exceptional academic foundation with a capacity for creativity, critical thinking, questioning, and reflective problem solving. And finally, in the body portion of our, our, our vision and our mission is to discipline, perseverance, and courage to maintain a lifetime commitment to healthy nutrition, physical balance, and harmony with God's purpose. So it's very important that we think about the outcomes we want to achieve and how we're going to get there. Speaking of that, how we're going to get there, most of really key to our culture and what we is what we call the VK way. And this drives the behaviors and actions of, of all members of our community. And it really represents our mission in action. The five elements, I won't repeat them all there, but you see them and they've remained unchanged. Um, we continue to find ways to lift up and recognize and reward both students, faculty and staff and, 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 and uh, parents who exhibit this and also um, call each other and hold each other accountable when we're not um, aligning with the BK way and those eight values um, and key part of our culture. So as we look to where we are today, where we wish to be over the next three to five years with our vision, grounded in our mission, we've identified three goal domains that come out of some of the work and the accreditation around national standards. And those three domains are mission and Catholic identity, academic excellence, and operational vitality, governance, and leadership. And out of those, the next slide I'm gonna share with you, we have six goals over the next three years. And we also, in those, there's more strategies underneath these, but in those goals, we picked two strategies to focus on for this year. So the first goal is around providing a loving, safe, and caring environment where students can have an opportunity to encounter Jesus Christ and deepen their understanding of the truth, beauty, and goodness of the Catholic Church. And it's also a time, is why this priority is here, is encourage our kids to in their classes to have scholarly discussion and dialogue around how do we maintain the safe, caring, and compassionate culture. Because there are different points of view and it's also a time for kids to explore and ask questions about their faith and why we believe what we do, or if they're not Catholic, why do Catholics believe that? And how do we, how do we make that an engaging discussion? And the second one is how do we make sure that our all faculty and staff have a role in the faith development, and finding those moments of encounter with Jesus and how do we incorporate across disciplines. So that's our first mission on identity goal around the safe and loving and caring environment. The second goal is around opportunities outside the classroom to participate in prayer and action in the service of social justice. So our two priorities for this year, one is to continue to work in partnership with our parishes, uh, our pastors and our bishop and our partner schools uh, that are part of the parishes to in the faith formation of our students. We can't do this alone. We're part of a community that is needs to work and is I think working well together to accomplish that. But we need to strengthen that. And the second is how do we demonstrate our faith in action? What are the things we can do to show and particularly these times when so many people are hurting and there's so much strife in our, in our society show compassion for those most vulnerable. The next two goals and focus for this year are around academic excellence. And highlighted here is the importance of preparing and supporting and challenging our students to do their very best and achieve their personal potential. That could be a four point something GPA, that could be a three point GPA, and it could be two and a half. It could be their strength is in something, a specific area and not an area, but we wanna challenge them to do their very best and achieve their personal potential. So we want to make sure we have a, a system of academic instruction and support that help that whether it's a virtual hybrid or all back as we're 
working through in 2020. Important this year that we get that right. Second is character programming. We know, and particularly through this time in the spring, we heard from a lot of you and we witnessed ourselves, how do we develop those, even in a world that we're living in, social emotional skills, resilience and perseverance, and working with our parents in partnership to continue to strengthen those. And finally, how do we have that intellectual engagement and academic rigor with a strong focus on those essential and critical schools? How do we challenge our, our students to be prepared for life after high school? Goal four is that second one in academic excellence and it's around effective teachers and high quality curriculum. Um, we continue to focus on the development and improving the knowledge and skills of our um, teachers, particularly in this world, new world we're living in for effective instruction meeting student needs and modeling those gospel values. The second area of focus this year is facilitating collaboration among teachers, with, in both in grade levels and with departments to, to make sure we continue to strengthen our instructional effectiveness and their assessment of students and what they need. Lastly, in the areas of operational vitality, governance and leadership, the first goal is ensuring that our Bishop Kelly community has a sense of ownership and pride in their school and work together, again, that word partnership to positively affect Bishop Kelly. Um, there are two areas of focus there this year. First around the partnerships with the BK Foundation, which has been outstanding and for in many ways, and we wanna continue that. And particular emphasis on BK uh, Parents Association, which we have not done as good a job um, as a community. And we, I think after a great start this year under work of Tommy um, Steiner and, and others, um, who are working in the, from our parents association. And finally, the sense of school belonging and pride and spirit, even in these difficult times when we can't always gather the way we'd like to, uh, as Mike says, a sense of community is an important focus. And finally, I'll wrap up with our sixth goal, which is making sure we continue to revolve, evolve and develop our operating policies, budgets and plans. So we ensure the long-term vitality of our organization and supporting the mission. So one is around total compensation to attract and retain our highly qualified and effective staff, faculty administration. We have to keep on top of that. Um, and secondly is around what I mentioned earlier is how do we maintain our BK way culture? How do we properly resource and make sure where our teams here and our families are supported and successful as we move through these uh, challenging times that we have? So. That's it. That's our focus for the next for this year. Those are the goals for the next three years. Um, I want to thank those. Many of you parents provided feedback. We have a um, president's advisory council and other ways that you provided feedback to us, and the leadership team and the board who, who really provided the guidance and leadership to get us to publishing this plan. We had intended to have this published to you um, by this meeting, but we've been a little busy with a few other things on a daily and weekly basis. So you should expect in the month of September, a summary of this plan, a brochure and some other things that'll be on our website. You can access it and you can see all the strategies over the next three years, not just the first year strategy. So let me wrap up my comments with a note of appreciation. Over the last five years, we have been working as a community on our BK 2020 vision. And you'll see in the graphic here of the, of the uh, school, uh, the changes that you have made possible over the last four to five years. What you see in the squares there are the things that happened between 2014 and 2017, from the tennis courts on the left to the Father Wilson Science and Technology Wing in the, the long rectangle, uh, the new uh, East Classroom Wing, uh, the library, um, brand new reverb-furbished library, uh, uh, performance training center and lacrosse wall. In the last uh, couple of years, we've in phase three, which you see the circles, the ellipses there, we have our kitchen, our reg is a really a wonderful performing arts center, softball, our ladies garden, uh, been a number of baseball Im improvements over this time. We have one last project left. I wanna share with you what that is um, as we finish out 2020. And the next slide gives you a visual of that. This is our um, Isursa Field, which actually was the first project we were planning to do in 2014-15, but it took a backseat to the need to add additional classrooms and the science and technology wing as you saw our, our school growing. 
So we have now um, working with uh, some leadership giving plans and uh, how we get our community excited. And they are very excited as we've talked to it. Our goal is to have this, as you see there, a new entry concessions, restroom, ticket office, and plaza are ready for our graduation in 2021. Um, and if, if we run into any delays, either in fundraising or schedule or weather, permitting process, et cetera, at the latest by the start of the fall 2020, 2021 football season. So you see the visual there looking in, how you would enter. You see another visual uh, looking back into the plaza area. You'll see a covered area there. And there are a number of other athletic improvements that we're evaluating to finish out the athletic infrastructure, but this is a primary one. It's a one to one and a half million dollar project that we are excited to, to bring to our community over the coming months. If you have interest in helping us, we'll Tommy Steiner, our director of development, and I would be happy to talk some more about it. Uh, this will also be one where every dollar we raise, 25% goes to help grow that endowment in the Bishop Kelly Foundation so we can keep tuition affordable and provide um, financial assistance to those families who need it. So I'll wrap up with by saying thank you uh, in many ways um, for many things, but in particular for the investments you've made to help our school improve our facilities, our programs, and our endowments to be such that we are, I think, really um, um, thriving as a school, and it's because of our community and the support and investments we've received from you. So thank you for that. Mike, I'll turn it back to you. We'll talk about the school year theme and wrap up with getting you to go see what some of your, your uh, sons and daughters are doing in their classes and meet their teachers. So thank you again. I think the uh, this this is more of an unofficial theme. I don't know if it's our official theme, but, but it's certainly something that um, internally we've been saying a lot lately. Um, with you know going back um, even back to March, it has been unprecedented and the number of of decisions and and challenges that we've had to kind of navigate um, through the last five months moving just to keep moving forward and with with a with a common goal of getting kids and teachers back in school and, and getting here safely so i have a you know a short little video here of um a familiar um character that i think the nemo in this case is is me um get the get the volume right here just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dorino singing. Oh, 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 I love to swim. In. Dorino. When you want to swim, you want See, to See, I'm going to get stuck now with that song. Now it's in my head. Sorry. I'm sure you've seen that video many times, but uh, um, I think that really captures where we're at this year and, and what we need to do. And I think there's a couple things in that. One is, um, you know, there's, there's, we still have a lot of work in front of us to, to in, in, in decisions and, and planning and things to keep, to keep going as a school and to, to get students here and keep them here and, and that. And, and we just have to keep moving forward and we're going to make the de best decisions that we can possibly make with the information that we have ha at hand. And um, some will be right, some will be not, you know, not perfect, but we just have to keep moving forward and, and, and making those decisions with the best of our abilities and, and, our, and our judgment. I think the other piece of that is that we, we can't do this alone, you know, it, and we need, we need the Doras out there that, um, that uh, look out for where we're looking out for each other and, and, and supporting each other as a community. And this goes all the way up and down the line from students supporting each other, students supporting teachers, teachers supporting students. Um, we need parents and and admin working together in this, and 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 so on and so forth. It, it, this is going to take a community effort throughout the year, just just to keep swimming and to keep moving forward and focusing on our priorities and our goals and working together to 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 make this year successful. Um, we feel good about where we're at. Um, we'll feel great after net at the this time next week when we can execute a, a full week with students on campus and get into our activities and competitions and keeping everyone healthy at the same time. And um, 
and we'll just keep going week by week and, and doing the best that we can to get, um, like I said, get kids at, in class. So thank you for your support thus far and, and continue to um, reach out to us and, and offer your ideas and support and uh, we'll keep doing our, our absolute best to keep kids in classes. At this time, uh, we're going to hear from uh, Mike and Carmen and Murray and Kelly, uh, our, our chairs and co-chairs for our winner's choice this year. And after that, we'll talk about some, some upcoming dates just to be aware of and get you moving on to um, hearing from your teachers. Hey everyone, we're Carmen and Mike Hormachia here with Kelly and Murray Lodge. Hello. We're your chairs for the 2020 Winner's Choice Dinner and Auction. We want you to know that this important event is still happening this year. We may not be getting together at the Boise Center, but we're coming to you live in your living room. And for you BK families that are new, every year the BK Foundation hosts a dinner and auction that generates revenue for the school. Last year, it raised over $500,000 that went to school operations and for need-based scholarships. And let's see, I think this year, the school is actually getting over a million and a quarter from the BK Foundation. And that's going to help lower our tuition at BK. So it is actually Catholic schools in the whole Pacific Northwest. It's the lowest. And of course, that helps all families at BK. For sure, so I get announced the theme of this year's auction dinner, which is college nights. Woo! Woo! <laughs> the, idea, the idea came up last year when uh, Carmen and I were on our first go as uh, chair people for the event. And at the time, our oldest daughter, Avery, was going through the right in the throes of her college applications and testing and all that goes on when you're searching for a place to go on to school. And it struck us that one of the uh, most important and valuable things we get out of Bishop Kelly's school um, is the preparation they give to our kids to move on to college. Uh, and what more fun would there be to put on, dig out some old college swag, tell some old stories, um, and have a good time in the name of the event and raise a bunch of money. So dig out your swag. Let's have a good time. College nights. Woo! So mark your calendars. This year's event will kick off with our online auction October 30th, and it will end on Saturday, November 7th with our virtual event. You may wonder how you can get involved, and we'd love your help. This year is more important than ever to bring our BK community together. Please consider being a sponsor, donating something to the auction, and most of all, participating in our first ever virtual event. Because it's virtual, feel free to invite family and friends far and wide to join in on the fun. In case you're wondering if you'll still have a chance to win that new car, the answer is yes. When you purchase your virtual event tickets or table packages, your name will be added to the car drawing. In addition, golden ticket sales will begin soon. Only a limited number of these are available, so don't miss out on your chance to win a $5,000 tuition voucher or a live item a live auction item of your choice. Look for more, more College Nights information in your BK Live newsletters on the uh, Foundation website and in your mailbox. Buy your tickets, tune in, and bid high. We, we all, all win, win with Winner's Choice! Awesome. Thank you, um, Mike and Carmen, Murray and Kelly. We really appreciate your leadership and support in this year's Winner's Choice Dinner and Auction. Um, it should be a great event despite um, the new format. So thank you. Again, the dates on that online auction opens October 30th, ends November 7th, and um, great information. So thank you. So as we wrap up here in just a few minutes, I want to point out a few dates. October 14th was our original PSAT testing date for all of our sophomores and juniors. We have an option to push that to a January testing date, which we're going to take. Um, and that changes a little bit of our format for that date. We'll still have a college blitz for our seniors, which is typical for PSAT testing date. So that'll be from nine to noon for all of our seniors. 
which frees up our juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. Last year, we piloted with just our freshmen a Learnapalooza event, and we are going to extend that to all of our students and, and use this opportunity to make a very special day for all of our grade levels, 9 through 11, focusing on enrichment learning and trying something new, and also developing new um, relationships. Going back to some of our focus around community, um, this will be a really important day um, to focus on that. So stay tuned for more information on that. Some other dates to mark your calendar. If you're a parent of a senior, um, remind your seniors that we will have a senior college planning presentation next Wednesday. And this is for any of those seniors that didn't go to the college planning presentation in August. So this is another opportunity to um, get some basic information on the college planning process from your counselors. This is Wednesday, September 9th, and this, so this is during office hours on the 9th, and it's live in three different locations. This will be posted in Schoology from your counselors. So this is specific to the students. For the parents, we'll have a senior college information night on Wednesday, September 30th at 6.30 p.m. It'll be a similar format to what we have tonight, so it'll be a virtual format, so any and all can attend. Parent-teacher conferences, um, Wednesday, October 28th, and Thursday, October 29th. Times and format, TBD. Thanksgiving break, uh, um, this year is unique and different from what we've had in the past. This will be a full week of Thanksgiving, so Monday, 20th, November 23rd through Friday, November 27th, full week off. And then final exams, December 16th through the 18th. Please plan accordingly. If you're taking that trip to Maui, please wait until December 19th, or at least the afternoon of the 18th before you depart. So thank you for that. So back to school night. Typically right now we'd be excusing you to go out into the school and visit your various, uh, various teachers of your children. Um, if you go to our website, um, our just-in-time blog, I'll click on that, you, you're going to see some links that are, um, are virtual and back to school night um, that you can go to at your leisure. Um, you can go now if you would like, but you'll go and each of your teachers have put together an introduction video as well as posting their syllabus for each of their class to um, provide you information about them as, the, as, as your child's teacher as well as information about um, the, your child's course. So all of that information is on our Just In Time blog. I'll go to that in just a minute. And in addition to that, in reference to next week, there's also a link that we sent in Just In Time, the Just In Time email today for any of you that are choosing the online learning option next week. And then just a couple additional things. Logging into Infinite Campus. Um, you, Infinite Campus is brand new if you haven't looked at it yet. In Infinite Campus, you can get access to your student schedule, current grades, personal household information, and those types of things. You should have already received an email with a unique URL and access code. But if you can't find that, a new email will be sent to everyone tomorrow morning. Um, if all else fails, you can't figure out how to or you don't have access or can't figure out how to access Infinite Campus, um, you can shoot an email to help desk. But wait and do to do that until after tomorrow morning where you get an email. We did put a short video together for a quick introduction to Infinite Campus, so we'll watch that real quick right now. And then we'll send you off to go view your teacher's um, introduction videos. So this was put together by John McGrew, one of our IT support. Hello. This evening we're going to go over how to log in for the first time to Infinite Campus so that you can see your students' grades, schedule, upcoming assignments, etc. Each one of you should have received an email similar to this. Should you click on this unique link, it's unique for you, it will take you to a screen just like this. It's asking you to input your own username right here and assign yourself a unique password to you. The only thing that needs to happen on this password is that it has to have at least one
capital letter, and be at least eight digits long. The other thing that must happen is that it has to reach 100%. If your password strength is not 100%, Infinite Campus will not accept the password. Once all those things are correct, then click on Submit. That will take you to a new tab, which will look something like this. When you click on this link here, Back to Login, it will take you to this screen. That's where you'll put in your username and your password. When you do that, it'll take you to the next screen, which will look just like this. Many of you will have a pop-up that'll show up talking to you about Amazon Alexa. Go ahead and close out of that and you'll see this. Over on the left side, you'll see several links. You can see what's happening today, the calendar, assignments. If you click on grades, it'll take you to a screen just like this, where you can adjust based on what semester it is, whether it's semester one, semester two. You can see your students' courses and what their current grade is in those courses. The best way to get back to this in the future is to go to bk.org. At bk.org, when you scroll about eh, halfway down the page, you'll see an option for parents. Under parents, you'll see Infinite Campus Login. That will again take you back to this login page where you can use your username and password to get access to all of your students' information. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. All right, awesome. So let's see, with that, um, we'll go ahead and jump into, just so you have reference um, to our Just-in-Time blog, um, if you go to our home page and you go to About, you'll see a link towards the middle Just-in-Time blog. That'll take you to this page where um, we'll archive um, all of our Just-in-Times that we sent, uh, send throughout the year and we have one here for back to school night specifically so when you click on this and scroll down you'll see three links one is um, a link to tonight's um, YouTube video and the other one which I um, encourage you to check out is this back to school night introduction videos and course syllabi so when you go on to this you will see that each of our teachers went ahead and, and put together an introduction video. So find your child's schedule if you don't know it on Infinite Campus or ask them and go through your, your child's schedule. You can take a look at their course syllabi in, the, in, this, in this page as well. So that is on our Just-in-Time blog for Back to School Night. And then last, the action item, if your child is planning to do the opt-in for online learning, please complete this short form. That the purpose of this form is, and it's, it's super short, many of you have already started filling it out, is um, simply to help inform our teachers that they're going to have an online student next week so they can plan accordingly. So it's a short form, student name, student grade level, and then choosing which dates, if any, your child is um, going online. Obviously, if all your, your students coming back to campus, which we hope they will, then this form is unnecessary for you. So, and I think that's a wrap. So we'll end with um, keeping in touch. So if you are not aware, we'll continue to do just in times as necessary. Those won't be every week. It's just specifically um, for information that we need, feel like we need to get out um, and call attention to our weekly BK Live newsletters that come out every Friday and then also um, be aware that we'll send out quarterly president principal newsletters. But all of this, just in time, BK Live can be found archived on our website. Of course, our social media at UABK for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, you can see the links there. And then if you're involved in, in athletics, there's our, our Bishop Kelly Athletics app. Um, that you can follow team schedules and information there as well. So thank you again for your time this evening. Um, 
we appreciate it. Go enjoy your teacher information videos um, that they worked so hard on for you. So thanks again. Thank you all for being there.